a hole for embarrassing my sister-in-law after she expected me to pay her and her friend's bill? So I-25 female went out for dinner for my sister-in-law's 28th female bachelorette party this past weekend. Between my sister-in-law and my husband, 26 male, sister-in-law has always been the golden child of the family. Growing up, my in-laws cuddled her and gave her everything that she wanted, while my husband always got the crappy end of the stick. She was always the popular girl in school, cheerleader, lots of friends, and all the boys loved her, while my husband was always a little more nerdy and got picked on quite a bit. Even my in-laws would give him a hard time about this and say he needed to be more like his sister. Well, fast forward to today, both my husband and I went to top schools, got our degrees and currently have very well-paying jobs in tech. I'm not trying to sound braggy, this is just for context, but we live a very, very comfortable life. Sister-in-law still currently lives at home with my in-laws where they foot all of her bills. She had my niece for a female with her ex and is currently on marriage number two. This past weekend, I was invited to this fancy upscale restaurant in my city for my sister-in-law's bachelorette party saying she just wanted to do a nice dinner. There were eight of us in total, and at the end of dinner, the bill comes out and the waiter hands it to me. I'm sitting there confused for a second, until sister-in-law speaks up and is all, my parents and I were talking, and we're thinking you and my brother can handle the bill for this, as a wedding gift, since you're not financially contributing to my wedding. I stared at her shocked for a moment. And then was like, and you didn't think to bring this up to me beforehand? She started going off about how we're so well off, so what's the big deal? And she's sure her brother wouldn't have an issue with it. I ask her why her fiancé doesn't foot the bill, or my in-laws, and where in her right mind she thinks it's okay to spring this on me. She started going on about how we're the wealthiest in both her and her fiancé's family, and that she didn't think I would act like this and would say yes. I told her, well, sorry, but I'm not your parents. Don't expect handouts from me. She called me selfish, and I called her entitled brat, paid for my half of the bill and left. Well, as expected, my mother-in-law, sister-in-law, and even some of the cousins and aunts on my husband's side have been absolutely furious with me and are expecting me to apologize for the comments. I told them over my dead body. Husband is 100% on my side, and we are debating on not going to the wedding. I was talking to my mom, and she thinks I took it too far with the comments and she just apologized to keep the peace. Am I the a-hole? Info, the bill was close to 1,000 US dollars. Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. Don't apologize. No matter how much money you make, you are not expected to 1. Contribute to your sister-in-law's wedding, WTF. 2. Foot the bill for an entire bachelorette party that you are attending as a guest. 3. The escalator temper tantrum once she didn't get her way. The burden of payment for a bachelorette party usually falls on the maid of honor and bridesmaids, and arranged for ahead of time, or the bride. A far more common occurrence is that everyone pays their own way but chips in for the bride so that she is taken care of. But again, that's settled way ahead of time. Not day whole. I guarantee you were only invited as a setup to try and make you pay. Don't go to the wedding. And I'd honestly consider how much contact you want to maintain with sister-in-law and your in-laws moving forward. It's clear they see you two as nothing but an ADM. They obviously splurged as much as they wanted as well, with the bill being close to 1,000 US dollars. Not the a-hole. The fact of her springing that on you at the end is unconscionable. It'd be one thing but still questionable if they had approached you privately beforehand to see if you'd throw a dinner for them. It's another entirely to surprise you at the end of a dinner and expect you to pay for not only her, but six of her friends. Even more so that she did it publicly. My guess is, she wanted to rely on you acquiescing to social pressure to do it without a fuss. Also that she expects contribution from you for her wedding. If you were her parent, that's one thing. But as a future sister-in-law? This is so wildly entitled on her part, and on the part of the families backing her. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to share my family's cookbook with my half-sister? My mom's grandma started a cookbook before she had kids. My grandma inherited it off her when grandma started having kids, and then my mom got it before she had me. My mom gave it to me when she was sick. I was seven at a time and died soon after. She told me to be careful with it and that it was special to our family. A couple of years after she died, I learned my dad had cheated on her with his now wife and that my half-sister was the product of an affair, and born before my parents' divorce was finalized. I was too young to realize when it was all going on. 
After learning this, I had a hard time being around my dad. I remember my mom being sad and it made sense why. I also learned that he had told my mom in a really cruel way. How I found out is, I eavesdropped on a fight between my dad and my maternal uncle and aunt and heard it all, including how much my dad hated how boring my mom was. I remained distant from him, his wife and my half-siblings ever since, but I have two more half-sisters and a half-brother. My dad decided to tell the oldest of my half-siblings about the cookbook. He mentioned how much I valued it and all kinds of stuff. She wanted to share it with me, to cook from it and to get right in it like I will someday. She pestered me about it, and every time I told her no. Then her parents would tell her more about it. In the end, she was upset and sobbing over being told no. I had told her it was something special from my mom's side, that I wanted to keep it private until I have children. That wasn't good enough, because she insisted we're family and she's my sister. My dad and his wife were angry with me. My dad's parents also told me I should have shared it with her, and that I'm being cruel to her when my mom isn't alive to care if the child born from the affair gets part of the book or not, but she could be closer to me because I share it with her. I don't really care about my dad nor his wife's opinion. I have no respect for them. They are pieces of trash in my eyes, but my grandparents and I always got along okay enough. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole and give the book to your aunt or uncle for safekeeping. Before it goes missing, it's destroyed or edited. Scan the pages and make yourself a working copy. Then put the original somewhere safe as a treasured heirloom. Maybe get a safe deposit box. I'm petty. I'd scan the pages but make some photoshopped alterations, which makes the recipes taste wrong slash inedible. You'll know. But if they copy your book, they won't be able to reproduce them properly. Not the whole. But you need to hide that book somewhere safe because they will take it. If they're petty enough, they'll probably destroy the cookbook. The parents could make their own traditions, but they wanted to hijack Opie's maternal family's tradition. Not an if, it's a for sure. There is literally no other reason for dad to want his other daughter to have it, other than knowing it hurts Opie and his ex-wife. Literally, that is it. He doesn't care if it makes Opie closer with her sister. He just wants to keep hurting his ex, because he has made it clear he has nothing but negative feelings for her. He called her boring and deliberately cheated on her as punishment for being so, and continued to use that as justification to others and why he hurt her. Opie's dad just wants to continue hurting a dead person and doesn't care if it hurts Opie too, because he probably hates Opie too for being connected to her mother. Dad just wants the other daughter to have it, because he probably convinced her to hate Opie and destroy it for fun when she does get it. Everything Dad is doing is on purpose to cause pain and hurt to someone who has been dead, and to Opie because she's an extension of her mother. Pretty pathetic that he's still trying to hurt a dead woman. Next story. Am I the a-hole for cancelling my mother-in-law's phone plan so she can't let my nephew use it? Am I the a-hole here? Everyone around me says yes, but I feel super gaslighted by my husband's family right now. We are both late 20s with no kids. We added my mother-in-law to our cell plan a few years ago when we got married because she lives alone and didn't have a cell phone. My husband thinks it will keep her safer to have one for emergencies. At the time we added her for her phone and plan, it was around $20 extra per month. Plan costs have gone up and she got a nicer phone so now it's close to $50 per month. Pretty steep the way the economy is, right? Anyway, my husband's brother has a young kid. He's eight. He's a nice kid, but not my responsibility. When I called my mother-in-law's cell phone a few days ago, my nephew answered. I asked him if he was at grandma's house and if I could talk to her. He said no. He was at his house and grandma's given him her cell phone to keep because his parents wouldn't get him one. My mother-in-law didn't tell me nor my husband about this, and I got pretty angry. I'm already not thrilled about paying for her to have a cell phone. So I'm definitely not happy about paying for my 8-year-old nephew to have it. So I went to her house and told her that if she wasn't going to use the phone, I was going to take it off our plan. And that I wanted the iPhone back from nephew because my husband's screen is cracked and he can have hers. It will save us a few hundred bucks since we won't have to buy a new phone. Needless to say, she's mad now because it's her phone to do with as she pleases. And she wants nephew to have it. I told her it's not her phone, and we won't pay for it if he's using it. I told hubby I was canceling it, and then I did. I told him if she wants a phone again, or wants nephew to have one, she can sign up for her own plan. He's mad that I did that, 
Mother-in-law's mad. Nephew and his parents are mad. But I did get the phone back, since it's no longer working on our plan. So am I the a-hole? I don't think I am. We all have to make cuts where we can with this economy. Now for the comments. Wait, the parents who wouldn't let their 8-year-old have a phone are mad? Shouldn't they be angry that your mother-in-law went over their heads? Or is nephew not getting a phone is for financial reasons? They just didn't want to have to pay for a phone, but are happy to have someone else pay for it. Not the a-hole. The whole point was for mother-in-law to have it because she lives alone and might have an emergency. If she chooses not to keep it, then you don't have to pay for anything. And clearly, she doesn't need a phone. And she happily gave away someone else's property. Something tells me she intended for nephew to have it. That's why she upgraded a phone. Not the a-hole. Your husband and you put mother-in-law on your cell phone plan for her well-being. She's gotten a nicer phone, and plan costs have gone up, so instead of $20, you now pay $50 to assure mother-in-law's well-being. You have paid her cell phone costs for several years now. Eight-year-old nephew's parents won't give him a phone. Mother-in-law gives her phone and plan, which $50 each month, to eight-year-old. Now, his parents don't mind him having a phone. No one informed owners and payers of said phone and plan. OP cancels plan and recuperates phone. Now, everybody faults OP for not wanting to pay $600 a year for having husband's brother's 8-year-old on their phone plan? Entitled anyone? Even the husband. What a jerk. I get the feeling that he's mad because mommy's mad. Bingo. Last story. Am I the a-hole for ruining my son's sister's first birthday? My ex's new wife called me three weeks ago and said that she just realized her daughter's birthday was on my week. She asked me to please bring my son to the party or drop him off the night before and they'd bring him back the next morning. She was very entitled about it. She presented me two options when I don't have to do either. I said I would think about it. Then she got huffy and said he has to be at his little sister's party. I again said I would think about it and she continued to argue. So I hung up. The day before the party, I asked my son, do you want to go to your sister's birthday party? He said he did. So I texted her to tell her we would be there and ask her for the time of the party. She told me it was at noon. So we got there at 12.30 and there were no other cars, which was weird. When we went inside, my ex said he needed to talk to me, and I said that wasn't necessary. It asked where the party guests were. He said he needed to prepare me before I saw his wife. I said, why? Is she pregnant or something? He said she was and I just rolled my eyes. I again asks where the party guests were. He said the party was at 2 but they wanted to make sure I had time to put myself together before the party. I told him he needed to quit with a soap opera drama because I don't have time for it. I took time out of my day to accommodate them but they blew it. I'm not hanging out with them in an empty house for over an hour and I'm not wasting gas to leave and come back. I took my son to the park and we had a nice day. But my ex texted me a bunch about how I was punishing his daughter for the pregnancy when I don't care that his wife is pregnant. My only response was a text that said, grow up. My son asked about his sister's birthday. And I said there was a mix up with a party time, which is true. And they would all celebrate together when he was at his dad's. So he was chill. My mom said I hurt the birthday girl, but she's one. She's not going to notice who is at her party. My mom told me to be the bigger person, but I feel there is a limit to that. I'm not going to reward lying and trickery in my ex any more than I would reward it if my six-year-old did it. Am I the a-hole for leaving and not coming back? So wait, your ex intentionally kept the actual time from you so you would show up early. And all that just so he can tell you about a pregnancy in person and give you time to put yourself together afterwards as if it's some life-shattering news to you? Hell no, not the a-hole. He really seems to love drama. I wouldn't like to know what kind of reaction they wanted. You sobbing on the floor while they can be the bigger person and comfort you? And later they will tell everyone how hard it hit you and how nice they are for being there for you. Whatever weird kind of dream they had about this obviously did not work. They could have been normal and told you the actual time. It was already nice of you to bring your son. I would have told them they can drive if they want him to join during your time. I'm sure that was his fantasy. He's always preferred fantasy to reality. I thought it was romantic when I was young and stupid. Unfortunately, I too was made of flesh and bone, so it's hard of me quickly. But it's fine. He gave me a gift I'd never return. I won't begrudge him the pain. It thickened my skin at least. Not the a-hole. 
They weren't honest with you. Your ex could have called you to tell you about the new pregnancy. They didn't need to trick you ahead of time. It was kind of you to show up with your child in your own parenting time. Next time you speak with them, let them know they need to be honest with you or you will never be flexible with your own parenting time again. If you don't make a clear boundary, they will do this more, especially if they're making more children. They'll want to do more family parties, more vacations when it may be on your time. It would be nice if you could both be flexible with each other, but honesty and open communication is key here. They have to play ball too for it to work. Good luck, OP. Co-parenting is not easy. Ah, but if he was honest with me, he wouldn't have gotten a soap opera moment. He is, after all, the main character of life and we are all just supporting players in his story. Jokes aside, you're right, but that's never going to happen. He's allergic to honesty. The only reason I didn't suspect trickery was because his wife made a request, not him. But I guess it's rubbed off on her. Lol. Well then, he doesn't get flexibility from you. That's his choice. You're right, they blew it. But they'll be claiming they're the victims until the end of time. It is what it is, I guess.